Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our second um, installment of the Young Professionals webinar series that is hosted by the San Antonio Visitor Alliance. And um, Sharon was not able to be here. So my name is David Uminski. I am the, the chairperson for the Young Professionals Committee. And so essentially what um, Sharon and I have, have worked on together is, is trying to develop these um, topics about professionalism to help individuals who are um, either young in the sense that they're entering the industry um, or young just in age in general. Because um, sometimes we do have a lot of people who transfer into our industry kind of as a second or maybe even a third career. And so um, the topics that, we've, that we're gonna focus on this week or this month is going to be soft skills. And so uh, we do have our three um, panelists that we're gonna talk a little bit about today with the soft skills. My name again is Ms. Uh, so Mr. Uvinsky. I'm David Uvinsky. I'm a full-time faculty at uh, St. Phillips College. I teach hotel and hospitality management and I've been involved with the uh, Visitor Alliance for, for a few years, at least the last four or five years um, as I've been a full-time faculty here at St. Phillips. And so um, I'm going to allow the uh, panelists to go ahead and introduce themselves. If you wanna kind of give us your quick little elevator pitch, kind of your background, your history, what you do now and kind of how you got to where you are. Um, kind of talk to that, that um, opportunity for our students or the people who are on the call today to be able to um, kind of see a potential career path. All right, Katrina, go ahead. Hello. So I actually um, started my career back in 2011. I should say that was my, my second career. Um, I used to work at AT&T, did that for quite a few years and my position was eliminated. So in 2011, I actually decided to go back to school. So I did that um, and then I started working in hospitality. So I fell in love with hotels. Um, during that time, I started working on my graduate degree um, here in San Antonio, I went to um, Texas A&M University and got my master's degree there. Um, I was very involved previously with the Alamo Colleges too, because I did go to San Antonio College and I got my associate's degree there too. Um, highly recommend to you know anyone who's who's looking to go back to school or even just looking to get their feet wet and see how that goes, because it 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 really went well for me. I had a lot of fun. Um, so from there, I started working at the Embassy Suites Riverwalk, actually, in downtown San Antonio. I was, um, I started with an entry-level position, and within a few months, I had my first HR manager role. Um, I opened the Embassy Suites Landmark. I joined Zachary Hospitality and opened the Embassy Suites Landmark in 2018. Um, so I actually, I opened that hotel, and then when COVID hit, we shut down the hotel for a couple months and I ended up leaving hospitality for just a hot second. I um, joined a healthcare company and opened up some clinics in San Antonio. And this opportunity came around to open up another hotel with the canopy. So I was grateful to be back. Um, it's a lot of fun. So I've enjoyed you know, coming back to what I love. I love HR. I love hotels and, you know, it's hard work, but we're, we're always having fun doing what we do. <laughs> That's a little bit about me. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Travis. Hey everybody, uh, Travis Wiest. I'm the vice president of Natural Bridge Caverns. Um, the, uh, I literally grew up here. The Caverns is a third generation family owned and operated business. Um, the land here has been in my family since 1880s and uh, Caverns was discovered. Uh, well, actually fa local farmers and ranchers knew of the cave from the, the turn of the century, um, but an extensive discovery was, was made in 1960 in the 60s. And so uh, some cavers from actually in San Antonio, they were from St. Mary's University, uh, made a big discovery and the family decided to open uh, the cave to the public as an attraction in 1963. Uh, and uh, working on that began and then they opened in 64. And uh, so I literally grew up here uh, from, from the time of early childhood, uh, literally here every day, uh, the whole family worked here. And so 
um, was put to work at a very young age and uh, began my career uh, doing anything and everything you can imagine from uh, cleaning floors and bathrooms to um, you know, running a cash register and you know, uh, making food, working retail, selling tickets, taking tours, and then uh, working on the ranch a lot, a lot of ranch work. So we still, we're still run uh, livestock uh, today and have cattle. The wildlife ranch next door is owned by my cousins, the Secting family. So it's a separate business from, from the caverns, but um, also a great attraction next door. So um, primarily uh, my duties today as one of the three owners, uh, operators uh, is mainly focused in advertising. And, uh, but we, we work as a three person executive team right now and making all the major leadership decisions uh, for the business. We have a team of uh, a general manager now who works underneath us directly. And uh, we have a team of directors that works underneath uh, us and our general manager and then uh, leadership team and management that works uh, below that. So uh, we, we definitely work and work closely with all of them and have a total staff uh, anywhere ranges from about 130 to 240 employees, depending on the season. And uh, so we see, uh, oh, 300 plus thousand visitors a year that come here. Uh, most of our visitors are from Texas, about 80 percent. And we get folks from all over the United States and really all over the world. So um, the caverns itself is a basically an attraction where you tour, tour the cave system underground. Uh, we also have surface attractions as well. Uh, ropes course, zip line, a maze, mining attraction. Uh, there's going to be uh, retail buildings, uh, food and beverage, uh, snack concessions areas as well. Um, you know, our goal is to try to keep people here on property with as much fun stuff as we can and uh, sell them as much along the way as possible. So, but uh, now we're, we're really all about just uh, bringing families closer to nature and, and, and closer together uh, through outdoor experiences and having fun. So um, but, uh, glad to be here. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Thank you so much, Travis and Jennifer. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jennifer Lemus. I am an area director of human resources for Omni Hotels and Resorts. Um, so I actually oversee two um, hotels here in San Antonio, the Omni La Mansion on the Riverwalk. And then across the river, we have Mokara Hotel and Spa. Um, and then on top of that, um, I also help area, um, sorry, HR operations for Austin uh, and Corpus Christi. So those um, two cities fall under my HR umbrella as well. Um, initially started in hospitality um, in high school. So worked in the food and beverage restaurant side of things, hostessing, busking tables, expediting, and then eventually became a server. Um, while I was serving, I went to college at University of Texas at Austin. I got my bachelor's degree in business uh, management. And then when I finished college, um, I wasn't quite ready to enter the workforce officially. So I decided to go get my master's degree. Um, so I got my master's degree in hotel restaurant management. I made a move to Houston, Texas. And um, when I was there, I decided that food and beverage was not for me. So I decided to work in the rooms division. So I started at the front desk at a boutique hotel in downtown Houston called the Magnolia um, while I was going to get my grad degree. And um, also while I was there, I decided to transition into HR and payroll. So I made the move from front of the house to the heart of the house and um, started working with associates um, more closely. Uh, I finished my degree in hotel restaurant management, um, moved back to the Austin area and then got connected with Omni Hotels there. So I've been with Omni for um, almost 14 years. Um, I actually am a Boomerang Omni associate, so I left Omni very quickly and then made my return as soon as possible. Um, this is my third Omni hotel. Um, I've got about 420 associates pre-COVID, and then as of now, we're around the 200 mark, so I'm looking to get back to, to normal here hopefully soon. Excellent. Thank you so much. <clears throat> All right, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and stop sharing the screen because um, we're just kind of really just open it up to question and answers. We do have some prepared questions, um, so feel free to, uh, you can put your camera on if you want to um, engage. Sometimes that helps us to, to see your, their facial expressions and see how you're engaged with the conversation. Um, and feel free to type any questions you have into the chat, or you can raise your hand if you have a question that comes up. Um, this is really an interactive session for you to, um, to engage with our panelists as, as much as possible. Um, so feel free, if you don't feel comfortable talking, um, go ahead and type your answer in the chat, your question in the chat, and I'll be happy to ask it um, as the moderator. Um, so the first question we wanna, you know, we're, we're talking about how soft skills are related to professionalism. And so um, first of all, the first question I'm going, to, I'm going to ask each panelist is what is your definition of professionalism? 
So how would you define the word professionalism? We'll start with Jennifer. Okay, so um, I think of it being a filtered version of your authentic self, right? So still wanna see you, who you are every day, um, but definitely there's things that we may say outside of the four walls or our business um, that we shouldn't say inside the day-to-day uh, -day meetings and interactions with guests or associates or our owners. Um, so definitely want to see their personality come through, but um, making sure that it's, you know, coming across as confident and competent and um, communicating in a way that's considered professional. Okay, excellent. And Travis? So I, I define professionalism with, I guess, more to do with the, all the soft skills and the, the things that are not necessarily related to particular knowledge and competency in a certain, you know, skill or field, but uh, your ability to uh, interact with people and, um, you know, a person's ability to engage and, and uh, they, they're all those qualities that an individual can bring that cross, you know, platforms and jobs of all kinds. Um, and and I, I do think it's, it often gets confused and I confuse it sometimes myself, you know, because a person who's highly competent and skilled, um, it, it, at a certain aspect of their job can, can often exhibit what seems like really good professionalism, but, but in the end, if they don't have those other skills to go with it, those soft skills, it, it, they really, they really will not shine in overall professionalism, in my opinion. Okay, excellent. And Katrina? I think for professionalism, it's just a way you carry yourself. It's a way you, um, it's the way you communicate with people. It's about building relationships and if you're um, able to connect with people too. I think when it comes to soft skills, I, I mean, that's big, people hear it a lot, but they don't always think of what exactly, in, you know, makes up soft skills. Um, one of the big ones, and we've heard a lot more, but emotional intelligence is just a huge one that people don't take into account when you talk about soft skills. So that's a, a really big one. And we, um, some of us know leaders that don't have that. Um, so it's a, it's a really um, hard skill to build, but it's, I think it's possible. Excellent. And so that's a great kind of segue. The next question really is, you know, we talk about soft skills and hard skills. And um, oftentimes we have, whenever we're in, in conversations, you hear buzzwords like, oh, let me circle back or let me um, touch base or let me let's get the synergy going and all these different buzzwords that happen and soft skills, I feel like is one of those buzzwords, but I don't know if people really actually know what soft skills means. And so, um, you know, for hard skills, those are the things that you learn the technical aspects of the job. Um, and so for soft skills, those are all those, you know, I define those as, you know, communication, um, the, the ability to communicate, the ability to work as a team. So um, for each one of you, let's start with Travis this time. So Travis, what are some, what do you think are some of the most important soft skills that, that you, people need to have in, within the uh, attractions industry? The, the, the people skill set, uh, you know, and I, I think is just the ability to work with people um, of all kinds and, and different team members that, and being able to communicate your, your message, but also being, being able to listen to what other people have to say, um, being able to resolve conflict within teams or within other coworkers or guests uh, potentially as well. Um, but that's, that's you just the, the interpersonal communication skills and the ability to work with and communicate with people and to, to, to get along, um, those people skills, I, I feel like, are one of the most important ones uh, that can serve people the best. Excellent. And then, Jennifer, anything to add to that from the hotel's perspective? Yeah, teamwork is definitely very important for us. Um, we cannot do it without, you know, every department really stepping in, really helping each other out. So when we look for associates, um, they don't always have to be the most outgoing personality, but they need to have a teamwork mindset. Um, and definitely willing and able to problem solve and, and make connections with the guests and uh, obviously with other associates as well. Awesome. And then Katrina, anything to add for that? Um, I think, you know, soft skills, it's really just um, those 
personal skills. I think that's really, you know, what it comes down to. Um, attitudes, right? The right attitude. And, and really, we keep saying, you know, being able to work with people. So I think it just ultimately is relationships, building relationships. Excellent. Yeah, I think, I think that is one of the most important um, soft skills is that that relationship, um, and communication, those interpersonal skills. Um, right. Jennifer, you mentioned problem solving. And I think that's also one of the, the great things, um, you know, in our industry, we traditionally learn on the job training. And so, you know, learning and experiencing from the mistakes that we've made kind of helps us in our problem solving. Um, Travis, you mentioned in your introduction that you kind of were a part of this from a very young age because you were helping your family run the, the, the family business. Um, so what do you think, what, what soft skills do you think you developed through that process and how have they helped serve you in your, your current role as the, the leadership of the organization? Well, I definitely, I definitely learned, uh, you know, a work ethic early on. Uh, and that's, you know, the, I think that's something that a lot of the kids that uh, come to work for us now, I say kids because we do employ a lot of first time uh, people in the workforce, uh, a lot of high school kids and and college age kids will come to us. And many times, a lot of the high school kids, it's their first job. And, uh, but I think that, you know, learn, learning, the learning work ethic and, um, but it was, you know, honesty, independability um, were, were very important. And, and uh, you know, I think that uh, speaks a lot about a, a person's integrity and kind of, you know, what can they be dependable and can, you know, to show up when, when they're told to show up or to get the job done, they've been told to do. And, and uh, so, um, I think those were some things I learned early on. And, and, I, and I, I, I saw that modeled in, in you know, my family's work ethic and the generations in front of me. And I saw that model from some key team members that were working for, for our family uh, when I was very young and, and, and who were some of those individuals making sure that I was putting forth the effort that I needed to. So, um, but, uh, so that's, that's how some of the things I learned early on. And, and I definitely think it's, uh, you know, it, it served me, served me well. And, and, uh, you know, I really, really just can't strive enough how important it is to to bring that bring some of those skills to bear. Um, and oftentimes, if, if someone has the hard skills to back it up, well, that person's really going to shine. But oftentimes, some of our biggest shining stars in our organization um, just simply have the soft skills and and a willingness and eagerness to work hard and learn. And 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 you know, we can teach them. Uh, the hard skills that they need to learn in many cases. And uh, if they have those soft skills, they, they find themselves climbing the ladder. Uh, and, and many, many of our leadership team has been with us uh, many, many years, 10, 20 years, 25 plus years for some individuals. And so, and a lot of times it's because those people, they've had those, they've had those soft skills to, to continue to grow and develop and, and learn and take on new responsibility. Excellent. And I think, um, you know, I have an opportunity to sing uh, Christmas carols at the caverns at, at Christmas time. And it's one of my, my highlights of, of the year. And I have an opportunity to sing multiple nights. And um, I just remember this last year in 2020, um, there, one of my first nights, there was a tour guide that came through and, and they, they seemed kind of relatively new. Um, and they kind of stumbled their way through the, the, the speech, which I've heard so many times. Right. Um, but then you know, for like two, three weeks later when I'm singing again and that same tour guide comes through and they're speaking with confidence and there's, they know the material. And so it's really cool to see how that, that confidence in public speaking, which is also a huge, um, you know, to be able to communicate your confidence and communi communicate whether, you know, you know the information um, is, is a, a huge uh, benefit. And so I thought it was really cool to be able to see just in that short period of time that that person uh, make that, that improvement. Um, and so for each one of you, um, can you think of a time or a specific example of when you had a team member or you had an employee that, um, that came to you and you were able to kind of help foster their soft skills? What are some kind of coaching things that you gave um, that individual to help them develop their soft skills? Um, who would like to start? 
I'll start. Okay, go ahead, Jennifer. Um, so we love to promote from within. You know, we take hourly associates, we grow their careers. Making that jump from an hourly supervisor to a first-time manager can be very difficult um, because you're managing your coworkers and friends that you've come, you know, to work side by side with. Um, and learning that the way you communicate with them needs to adjust and change as well. So I've had some junior uh, managers who, you know, the associate will come in and say, they corrected me on something. They weren't as professional as I thought they should be, right? And then, and you know, have the manager come in and have the conversation of what happened, why did that happen? And the manager says, well, the associate did ABC. Okay, that's not okay. You know, for example, this manager caught them watching YouTube in the kitchen in the middle of a shift, right? So he just spazzed out on them, had some words, yelled, and then like took off the line. And I said, okay, what they did was wrong, but what you did obviously just canceled it all out, right? Like now you're in here trying to explain what the issue was, as opposed to saying, you know, hey team, put up the phone, get back to work. Like we need to talk about this later. And then having that conversation when you've had time to kind of let your emotions cool a little bit, because that, that is frustrating that that's happening in the middle of a busy brunch, um, but you need to step away from it and then compose yourself and then have that conversation later. So that way you can hold them accountable without them saying, well, he did this to me in return. So he understood and we, we worked on it, you know, for a year or two with like, you know, new, new issues would come up that he would be like, I did this this time, like you'd be really proud of me. And like, okay, let's keep working on it. So it was something that he definitely had to, to make adjustments on. That's excellent. I think that kind of goes back to your previous comment about problem solving is, you know, when, once you've experienced that and you realize, okay, um, this is how I handled it last time that maybe wasn't the best. And, and so use developing those skills to be able, and those, those, th those aren't technical skills. Those aren't things like how to make a recipe. Those are things of those interpersonal communication. Um, excellent example. Uh, Travis or Katrina. I've had, um, you know, with HR assistance, you know, my, I love helping people grow and learn. I always, you know, try to share all my knowledge. Um, but I had an, an HR assistant who just wasn't comfortable um, communicating with the team um, or communicating in big groups. So whenever we had our, our luncheon parties, events, or even trainings and orientations, she um, just wasn't comfortable speaking. Um, so being able to communicate, you know, in large groups was really hard for her. So I was able to kind of bring her in a little bit at a, at a time. So I just gave her small pieces to join in. Okay, this time I'm just gonna have you do this. I'm gonna have you do this. Okay, during orientation, you're gonna go through this part of the training. Um, and it got to the point where I was able just to say, okay, you're good and walk out and she was able to conduct her own orientation. So I think that was that was huge. And I don't think, um, it's, it's kind of funny because I don't think she realized that she was actually developing those skills. Excellent. Travis, do you have any examples that stand out to you? Yeah, I was thinking of, uh, thinking of a couple of individuals, uh, or two different examples, really. So one, one the, the team member was, they were the kind of person that, man, they were a workhorse and they could do, do things and get things done. But then as they grew in their role and they began to become a leader, they, they couldn't do everything themselves and they couldn't get it all done. And now they had a team underneath them, but yet they struggled with letting the team do things instead of doing it themselves. <laughs> and and they, they, they just wanted to do it themselves because nobody else could do it the way they wanted to do it. And so they found, you know, I, I, would, I would just constantly trying to coach them on, you know, you're going to have to learn to delegate and you're going to have to learn to let go and you have to learn to let other people do it. And, and sometimes, it, you know, you have to learn to accept the fact that they're not always going to get it right. And, uh, and just kind of, you know, coach them through that um, and let, give them a chance to fail. Maybe they, maybe they might surprise you in some, some cases. And so um, that was one example, I think, of someone trying to grow their ability to help to delegate and work with it, work with a team and, and to, to kind of make that transition from, you know, a workhorse that was getting, getting things done to a, a leader who now had a team of, of people that they needed to, to, to help, you know, help along as well. Um, Again, another another good example, just thinking about professionalism and, you know, uh, examples of it um, kind of on a good and bad side on the same thing was the the ability to own mistakes um, when they happen. 
um, is one of the things that, that, that I really, really look for. Um, it, it really irks me when someone who I know they know they've messed up, but they'll just make every excuse under the sun. Um, why, why it shouldn't have happened or why it did, you know, whatever, instead of just being like, you know, I'm, th this one's on me. I own it, you know, and, and man, I try to do that. I'll admit, I, I don't always get it right either, but, but that's something I really look for. And boy, when you see somebody that does that, it stands out. And then that really jumps out and you're like, wow, that, that you know, I, I respect, you know, Hey, we're all, we're all humans. We're all gonna make mistakes, but mm -hmm. I love the fact that this person just owned it, you know, and just said, Hey, I, 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 I did it. I, I'll do better. Sorry. And, you know, and man, you, you can sure forgive that person move on down the road and, and a whole lot easier than you, you know, kind of that person who tries to, you know, make every excuse under the sun. You're just kind of like, it's hard to forget sometimes. Absolutely. And I think you just, I mean, the other thing I, I'm, I'm hearing all of these things like dependability, honesty. Um, and then you just brought up another one is delegation. And I think that's kind of perfect for this, this particular audience, because you know, this young professionals group is, is designed for people who are young in the industry and then also just young in age, <laughs> excuse me. And so, um, you know, that delegation is, is a skill that, that can be developed. And if it's not developed, it doesn't go over very well um, and things just kind of fall apart. And so, you know, the idea is that hopefully all of us on the call are either, you know, in a lower or middle level management position and kind of being coached on how we can improve um, to work our way up into that, that, that corporate ladder, if you will. Um, and so I just have a couple more questions and I do want to open it up to some live Q&A. So those of you who are on the call, just a, for, a fair warning, I'm going to ask that you introduce yourself to us and, um, and also either ask a question or tell us one thing that kind of stood out in the conversation today um, that, that stood out to you. So keep thinking about that because I'm going to call on everybody. That's the, that's the teacher in me. I um, want to make sure everyone's participating. So another question uh, that I have kind of for Katrina and Jennifer, you know, and also Travis as well, but, you know, we talk about um, how our, our soft skills are often transferable into other industries. Um, and, you know, Katrina mentioned that from going to the, 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 hosp the hospitality, to the medical industry, the back to hospitality. Jennifer, you kind of alluded to that when you talked about kind of your career path through food and beverage to rooms and then to HR. So, um, so Katrina, how did you see that the soft skills that you look for from the HR perspective, how did you see that those soft skills were transferable from hospitality into the medical industry? Because those two don't really seem related, but the soft skills. No. <laughs> right. I mean, for, for myself, you know, in, in my role, um, it was being able to um, communicate with people, being able to bring people together, build teams. As far as, you know, the types of people I was interviewing in these different um, industries, I was still looking for those soft skills. So being able to um, communicate, but being able to um do it in a positive way, being able to engage people because in, you know, the health um, industry, you're also communicating with patients. You're welcoming them into your, you know, clinic, into your building, in the hotels, we're doing the same thing. Um, sometimes, you know, it's different reasons, right? Sometimes they're visiting the clinic because maybe, you know, they have a, an issue that's going on, but we still need to be able to welcome them in, you know, engage with them because we never know, what they're going through, what's going on. And same thing for hotels. We've seen it where people are staying at the hotel because they're here for a funeral. So you just never know what's going on with them, you know, with those guests or customers that are in front of you. So that's something I'm always looking for. Somebody with that positive attitude, somebody that's welcoming and warm and, you know, um, look and act like they want to be there. Awesome. Yeah. I think that, I mean, I think we all have had some kind of either retail or even like a hospital, like a medical situation an interaction with somebody where you realize like there still needs to be some kind of level of hospitality and kind right. of guest, guest service, that element. Right. And, 
And I know that our industry oftentimes is one where, um, you know, we, we I've, I've, I've heard it called the springboard industry where people learn skills here and it springboards them and prepares them to work in their chosen careers um, after college or, or whatnot. So Jennifer, you mentioned in your introduction that you went, you started out in F&B, food and beverage. Um, and, and like probably a lot of people in our industry, um, myself included, uh, culinary was not for me. I chopped, I chopped the tip of my thumb off and I zested my middle finger and me and sharp objects just were not going to get along. And so I had to switch to the front of the house. And, um, so what skills do you think that you, that you took along your way from food and beverage that then helped you in, be successful in the rooms division and then ultimately into HR? Yeah. So I think Growing up, I was definitely a quieter kid. I'm the third of two loud boys. And so I always took a back seat and wasn't super confident in, you know, saying what I needed to say. So being in food and beverage, it forced me to speak to people that I normally wouldn't be going up to, like how many people, you know, what do you need? And then of course, slowly it was like, not only am I sitting them at a table as a hostess, now I'm actually taking orders, interacting with the guests more, having to smile and, you know, make eye contact. And of course, apologize when something happened that, maybe wasn't my fault. So it taught me some different skills that um, I think were certainly a great foundation for hospitality. And then when I went to work in the rooms division at the hotel front desk, um, it went to a whole nother level, right? So you work in food and beverage as a server, you can step away from the guest and go to the back of the kitchen and kind of take your, your F and B professional hat off, right? <laughs> the front desk, that guest is in front of you. They don't leave until they're ready to leave. And so you're kind of at their mercy. So you definitely like have, it's a, it's a different muscle that you're working um, for professionalism and keeping, you know, your, your cool and making sure that you're still engaging with the guests in a way that you're expected to, especially if you're at a, a you know, fine establishment, right? Like there's a certain level of expectation. So I think just kind of growing that through my career. And then of course that translated over to HR where I felt like a little bit more about myself, like I wasn't on a stage, um, but definitely those skills that I learned how to talk to people from all over the world um, really, really made a difference in you know, getting to understand what our associates go through on a daily basis um, so that I can be like, I understand what, that you had a rough day. Like <laughs> it was a tough day today in F&B and, you know, and, and getting that side of it for them. That's awesome. And I think too, I like, I like your kind of transition and your, you know, through F and B to rooms division um, and then to HR where you're no longer taking care of the external customers, you're taking care of the internal customers and the associates. And I think that's, um, you know, when I was finishing my undergrad at A&M San Antonio, my, the, the classes that really resonated in my business degree was the HR, the HR side that I thought was like, wow, this is something I never really thought about. Um, as a potential career opportunity. Um, and then this teaching job came available, which I guess is somewhat like HR. I mean, you have to do training and teaching. And, and so, you know, it's, 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 it was a good fit for me at that time. Um, so that is, um, I feel like that is all of the questions that I have. There is one more I could possibly ask, but I do want to save some time for, um, uh, um, live Q&A. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just go in the order that I see on my screen. Um, Greg, if you go ahead and introduce yourself and ask either ask a question or um, tell us about one thing that you learned during the, the webinar today. Hey, how you doing? I'm Greg Peeler. Um, I'm just getting into the hospitality industry. So I retired from the Navy. Uh, spent about six years in Afghanistan after I retired. Now that Afghanistan's winding down, it's like, well, maybe I should find a new career. So like to travel, so hospitality, I thought, okay, I'll give that a shot. Um, so that's where I met Mr. Uminski, my professor at St. Phillips. Um, I will agree with what Travis said about the ability to own mistakes. That's a huge one. You know, when I was a leadership position in the Navy that, you know, that was big for me. So, um, you know, so I second that. But my question to y'all is, are y'all starting to see the travel industry or the hospitality industry start to get back to some semblance of normality in the post COVID? You know, or do you, or do you think this is here to stay for a while? Oh, no, oh. and people, um, sorry, did you want to go, Travis? 
You go ahead and I'll come after you. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, people are out. So we opened our hotel April 22nd, along with our restaurant on the Riverwalk Domingo um, and our bar, Otra Bar. Um, and we realized everyone is out. It feels very um, pre-COVID. Um, when we opened, we opened with so many positions and realized we needed to staff up. So we added quite a bit more. We've had um, waits to get into our restaurant. Uh, they turned me away for lunch one day because they were full. Um, so to answer your question, um, I think it, it's back to normal. I think everyone is out. Everyone wants to go live again. And and it does help, you know, that a lot of people are getting their vaccinations and they feel more comfortable being out. So I think we're going to be um, hospitality. I think we're going to be, you know, stronger than ever. Um, and I'm excited to see what happens, especially our first summer after that, you know, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll agree. The, uh, I think I think there's still parts of the industry that aren't back to normal yet, but I think the the industry is really starting to look optimistic for the coming summer season. Um, you know, for a lot, a lot of us, the, it is seasonal and summer is a, is a, a large travel period. And so, but, but all the indicators we're seeing right now is that we're, we are going to have a very good summer. Um, we had, we had the second best spring break on record uh, this past March. Um, wow. And so that's kind of an indicator that, you know, for us kind of what's happening this summer and, and, you know, leisure, family travel has been up, you know, week to week now since spring break. Um, and so we're expecting that to continue this summer, you know, conversely, you know, this time of year, we see a lot of school groups to, traditionally, this is a good school group season. We're not seeing any of those. So, I mean, I think this same day, 2019, I would have had, you know, three or 400 school kids, uh, at, at our attraction today, we had 50. And so, but we're seeing, you know, a larger, a, a more growth in the family, and leisure side of the business. So we're seeing, you know, more individuals coming through and families and traveling right now. So it's making up for a little bit of that difference. And, and then as we move into the summer, you know, the school groups aren't there and it's, it's all family and leisure business. And so we're expecting a very strong summer. So um, I think the business travel, I don't think is quite back the way it was yet. Um, and so I think the leisure travel is really kind of, you know, holding up the, the travel industry right now. But I think eventually that's gonna, that's gonna start to come back as well. And I think uh, you're already starting to see airline prices going up and, and hotels are starting to show more bookings and people are starting to book for trips further out. So, yeah, I think it's very optimistic right now. So we're excited. We're very glad to be open. Awesome. Jennifer, anything to add? Yeah, um, Greg, well, thank you for your service, first of all. Um, nice to see you're choosing hospitality as uh, your next career path. Um, we're hiring in case you're looking. <laughs> you want a job. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're not – 100% back to pre-COVID, um, leisure definitely is, is taking a bulk of our um, operation and, and reservations that are coming through that we're seeing. Um, we can't staff up fast enough, unfortunately. So like the restaurant, like not fully open on the La Mansion side, um, but we would love to be. We, we, we feel like we've got the demand. Um, and summertime for us definitely is very leisure heavy. Um, so I think that's giving us time to kind of get a sense of what's going to happen in the fall because we do rely a lot on extensions coming into San Antonio, um, you know, groups coming and booking. So we're seeing that start to pick up um, and more leads are coming in. So that's promising. Um, I think 2022 will definitely be the year that we're going to be kind of back to normal, um, ready to rock and roll and hopefully back up to, you know, 400 plus associates. We're, I'm ready to see the hotels back to life 100%. Awesome. Excellent. Jeannie, go ahead. Hi, Jeannie Prado here. I, uh, Formerly of iHeartMedia, was there 15 years. Uh, loved working there. Uh, COVID caused me to take a back seat and help my son fully. So I uh, left the workforce, and now I'm moving to Arizona in the summer. So advice for someone that's coming in brand new to a new market. What kind of advice can you give me as far as uh, introducing myself, places to go work? Do I start with the chambers? What? Give me some advice. That's good. I, I would definitely try to, uh, you know, get yourself out and about in the community as much as you can when you get there, and get just start meeting people and, and looking for, you know, if, as we're coming out of this, you know, COVID thing, people are starting to have things like mixers again, 
and, uh, and, and meet and greets and things like that. Anything you can do like that to get out and meet people and get face to face um, with people in the community in the area will help. And that just that, that you know, uh, networking opportunities that you can do to build some relationships in the community, I think would be a good starting point. Um, if you have any, anybody that you know, um, obviously, man, I'll tell you what, on the old saying, sometimes it's not what you know, it's who you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's true. Um, so if, if you know anybody, um, definitely reach out to them and have them start introducing you to people. Um, and then as you, you get to know people, have them help introduce you to people and continue that. Jeannie, um, I think next month in June, um, our whole webinar is going to be about networking. So definitely um, tune in next, next month in June. Um, I, what, uh, what area in Arizona? Well, my husband's already there. He's been there since January in Chandler. So okay. south, of, uh, south of Phoenix. And okay. uh, we're excited to be joining him soon. Excellent. Very cool. Um, yeah, yeah, I think just, you know, if there's any, if whatever, whatever professional field you're going into, there's got to be an association for that. Um, and so joining that association and being an active member in it, not just like paying your membership dues and then not showing up. I mean, the active membership really is, is something that, that definitely helps with that. So excellent. Um, Nicole, are you with us? If not, we'll go with Amber. I am here, Nicole. Oh. Sorry, it took a minute Sorry. to get off the okay. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Nicole. I, I didn't have a question. I wasn't sure if you were calling on me because we're going to be talking about networking next month. But um, <laughs> I, will add, I will add a tidbit uh, to that previous question, which is, I once heard, I haven't tried, that when you are new in a room, make friends with one person and then ask them, who should I know that's here today? And if you know them, will you please introduce me? And I, I would love to put that to the test and see if that works because it makes perfect sense. Maybe the person you, you know, start a conversation with isn't exactly the best option in the room, but I think people are pretty friendly and will point you around to other options. That's awesome. I love that suggestion. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Travis. Um, okay, Amber, go ahead. Hello, my name is Amber McGinty. Um, I've been in the hotel industry for about two and a half years. I actually stopped going before COVID, so I didn't get to see the downfall and everything, but I actually got a job at a Wyndham and I'm going to start Monday, so I'm very excited to get back in there. And um, I just want to thank everyone for their, you know, their their inputs, and not only as professionals, but as you know, management and higher up people that are going to be hiring us and, and what y'all are looking for in us. So I really do appreciate that, all your input. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so we are kind of right toward the end of time. Um, so I do want to share just real quick, uh, just a couple of resources about uh, building your um, your uh, soft skills. And so um, you'll see one of the ones that I know from uh, I'm most familiar with is Toastmasters, developing the public speaking and that confidence that's really important. Um, and so we can share this uh, with everyone and you can do a little bit more uh, investigating on your own for these different resources. For next, um, next month on June 17th, we are going to be doing networking as the, um, as the topic for our Young Professional Virtual Development Series. Um, Nicole, who just spoke, is, is one, of our, uh, one of our guest panelists for that time. She is a, a past president of the Alamo Area Hospitality Association. Uh, Michelle Matson is the current uh, CEO president of the uh, San Antonio Hotel Lodging Association. And then Davis Phillips um, is with Phillips Entertainment. His family owns and operates many attractions. Um, and he's also been a past uh, board chair 
for the San Antonio Visitor Alliance, um, and he's very, very involved in the industry. And so these webinars, again, they're free. Anybody can sign up. So, um, you know, if you've been to the, the, the previous one in April uh, and you want to invite your friends or your coworkers, or if you need a copy of the flyer to hang up in your, um, in your workspace, in the, like the break room, please let us know. We'll be happy to share that and encourage your, your team members to, to join us because networking, like Travis said, you know, sometimes it's not what you know, but who you know. Um, I personally am a, uh, a product of, of networking. I would not be where I am today um, if I hadn't joined the Alamo Area Hospitality Association back in 2010 and really kind of developed those networking skills. Um, I, I used to be the person who just would go check in and then sit down at my table. Um, and now they usually have to tell me over the microphone to shut up and sit down so we can start the meeting because uh, I just love the socializing so much. But, um, but yeah, so we hope you'll join us next, uh, next month for the networking topic. And um, thank you so much again to our panelists for today, uh, Travis, Katrina, and Jennifer. Um, kind of just touching real quick on networking. Again, Travis and, and I have worked on the Visitor Alliance Board of Directors. Um, Katrina, I met her at the, the um, Embassy Suites Riverwalk, and Jennifer is one of my advisory committee members for my hotel management program here at St. Phillips. And so, um, you know, it's, it's an opportunity for us to broaden our network and, and share the experiences that we've had with the people that are coming down um, and the next generation. And so thank you so much for that opportunity. Um, do any any one of y'all do you have any final final words before we end the uh, the webinar today? Yeah, David, I I have a final thought, and that's uh, you know you you can grow your soft skills, um, and a lot of times it just takes recognizing that you want to improve and get better, and then being willing to put yourself in a position to do that, and sometimes it just means putting yourself into situations maybe that you're not comfortable with just to try improving. Maybe that's public speaking. Maybe that's conflict resolution. Maybe recognizing that you have a time management problem and you can't show up on time and recognizing that and setting your watch 10 minutes early, you know, just whatever it is. But like, you know, if you want to get better at it, you can do it um, and uh, just make that commitment to get it done. Um, even, you know, the whole who, you know, thing, you know, yeah, sometimes we don't all, we don't all know, the, that right person, but you know, you do have control over who you meet and you can, you can work on trying to meet people. So I would just encourage people to do everything they can to improve those soft skills. I think that's uh, honestly uh, probably some of the most important skills you can have and then transfers across whatever industry and career and job you might ever have. Excellent. Thank you. Jennifer. I would have to agree with Travis about putting yourself out there. Um, if you watch the Brene Brown Netflix special that's on the like references thing, I'm telling you, that's a lot about what she talks about is, is kind of putting yourself in the arena um, and not just, you know, in your work life, but outside of your work life. But I think a lot of it can transfer over to our professional life and what we decide to do and the choices and the chances we decide to take, um, just take them and, and see where that takes you and leads you. And you won't know unless you try it. So uh, definitely working those soft skills can be uh, difficult, you know, if you're it's not your comfort zone, but what's the worst thing that can happen? Um, if you don't do it, then you'll never know. Excellent. Katrina. You know, I think um, one thing I hadn't shared um, what I feel has helped me like personally um, is reading. Um, there are a a lot of you know um, books that help with with growth, um, developing those soft skills too. Um, so I would definitely I I'm a little bit of a nerd, so um, I do I do like reading. I read every morning, but I switch it up. I don't always do the you know self help books. Um, sometimes I'll go read a fiction book, and then I'll go back just to kind of switch it up and make it fun. But I, I've gotten so much, and I get excited when I'm reading, and I'm like, yeah, and I think about work and you know, how it can help me in my role or another leader that may be able to use some of the, you know, the tips I've read, you know, so that's, that's a big one for me. 
Excellent. And I just want to say one last thing before, because Travis and Jennifer kind of made this jump to my mind. Um, I remember in 2012 when somebody asked me to be on a board of on the board of directors for AHA, and I was like, I I can't be on a board of directors. That's for old people. Like that's for people who have experience <laughs> in the industry. I'm in my 20s. How can I be a board of directors? But it was that moment of someone saying, no, I think you really can do it. And, and it took me stepping outside of my comfort zone. Um, and I still feel like I sit in board of directors meetings and I still feel like I don't belong there, but I'm always picking up the information that's in there that they're talking about. And it makes me just kind of build on my, my ability to communicate. I see great examples of great leaders. Um, and so for those of you who are in the industry, as you start developing into those management level positions, ask your leadership, can I participate in these organizations? Can you, will you support me in um, joining this association and giving me the time off so I can go to these meetings and I can participate in these? Because that's really gonna help develop those, those soft skills. So thank you all so much. And hopefully we will see you in June, um, on June 17th. Thank y'all. Thanks, David. Bye. Bye. Thank you.